everyone. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We thank the Lord today on this blessed Sunday morning that he has given us strength, amen, to come to his house. He said we are not to forsake the gathering of ourselves. We know that the time is short. Jesus is coming soon. How many of you believe that Jesus is coming soon? Amen, amen. Sooner than we think. Amen? amen. Yes, Lord. The Bible says that he shall appear like a thief in the night. You never expect a thief to steal, to come to your property and steal from you. In like manner, Jesus will appear when you least expect him. So we are to be watching and we are to occupy. He said, occupy till I come. Amen? Amen. So please gather your Bibles and let's turn to the Word of God. Let's hear what God has to say to us today. Amen? Amen. Get your Bibles and turn with me to the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 5. Mark, chapter 5. When you find it, please stand for the reading of God's Word. Forgive me for the clattering sound and putting on them and removing my glasses as I need them. chapter 5. We'll begin at verse 21. We'll read from 21 to 24, and then we'll jump down to 35 to 43. Amen? Everyone has it? Amen. Here begin at the reading of God's holy word. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. There's a slight echo. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, Come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and thronged him. Jump down to verse 35. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand, and said unto her, Talitha Kumi, which is, being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked. For she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. The text, verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. So far the scriptures. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this house. We thank you for your children who are gathered here, Lord God. We thank you for this service. We thank you, Father, for your presence here. And we thank you for your word, Lord, that you have put in my heart to share with your people. God, I ask you to anoint me now from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Father, let every word that I say be what your Holy Spirit calls me to utter. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. I ask that you anoint the ears of the hearers of this word, Father. And that, Lord God, when we leave this place, our lives will be changed. Father, we will be challenged to walk by faith and not by sight. To trust you, Lord, completely at your word. Father, we love you with all our hearts today. We pray for those who are absent today, Lord God, who desire to be here but could not be here. We ask that you bless them with a special blessing this day. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, so a quick background. Um, the Gospel of Mark was written by John Mark. For those of you who know your Bible and you have read, in particular, the book of Acts, um, you know that John Mark was one, a young man who accompanied Paul on, and Barnabas on their early journeys. Now, um, in, in Acts chapter 12, remember that um, the account when Peter, Peter had been put in prison by King Herod because, because Herod saw that he had, after he had killed James, the brother of John, he saw that it pleased the people, so he wanted to continue to persecute Christians. So he took Peter, and the Bible tells us that he put Peter in prison. But the Bible also tells us that God sent one of his angels to wake Peter up and to bring him from prison, to bring him out of prison, to free him. There were a group of people that had been praying at a house, and the Bible tells us that when, when Peter went to the house and knocked on the door, the, the young girl who opened the door heard his voice, but she was so shocked that the prayers were answered that she ran back in and shut the door without letting Peter in. Well, this very house was the house of John Mark. This is the person who wrote this gospel. Now, uh, accounts tell us that he, that Peter was the one who relayed the circumstances that we are reading in this gospel, and he was the one, and John Mark was the one who wrote it. So, if you can think of this as Peter's words, Amen. Amen. Now, the the gospel of Mark is very interesting. Um, when I did a little background study, it tells us that Mark wrote very fast paced. When it, when you read it, you will see that. Is the word immediately in particular appears over 30 times in the gospel. He was always showing Jesus on a move constantly, like from one, one circumstance, healing people and then moving on to the next thing. So it was very fast paced. He gave us an impression that um, it was urgent that, that we follow Jesus' ministry because his time on earth was going to be very short. Amen? So when we get to this account in chapter 5, we know that the beginning of chapter 5 introduces us to Jesus healing the demoniac, the one we call the demoniac, the one who had the legion of spirits. And the early part of chapter 5 tells us that when this unclean, this man who was um, taken over by unclean spirits saw Jesus, he ran to Jesus and he fell at his feet and worshipped him. Now, um, the Bible tells us that Jesus set him free from the spirits. Um, the spirits asked him permission to go into the pigs that were in the coast. And he gave them permission, and the pigs, once the spirits went into them, the, the, the pigs ran down the cliff and perished in the water. Now, when Jesus departed from that coast, the Bible tells us that he went across onto the other side, from, from the ship onto the other side. Let's begin at verse 21. It tells us, and when Jesus was passed over again by ship onto the other side, much people gathered onto him, and he was nigh onto the sea. So we see here that Jesus was becoming very popular. Everywhere that Jesus went, multitudes thronged him. A lot of people wanted to hear this new fascinating person who was on the scene. Most of them didn't know that Jesus was the promised Messiah. They just knew that he was a great teacher and that what he had to say was, was marvelous and, and he was healing and delivering a lot of people from unclean spirits and he was opening blind eyes and he was setting the captives free. So if you come, if you come across, across someone like that, of course you're going to get excited about them and you're going to want to follow them, right? And this is exactly what was happening. So more and more people were being drawn to Jesus because of the wonderful things that he was doing. The Bible says, much people gathered unto him and he was near the sea. Verse 22, and behold, that word behold is very important. It's, it's telling you to look. Fasten your gaze upon something that is about to happen here. God is very particular. The Spirit of God is very particular in the words that he chose to put in the Word of God. He says, And lo, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. A ruler of the synagogue. Now his responsibility was to 
basically superintend over the service that was going on in the synagogue. He was responsible to make sure that the reader, the reading and the preaching of, of the word that was going on in the synagogue was, was proper, it was appropriate. So he was very knowledgeable about the word and he was very knowledgeable about how things were to be done in the synagogue. And it was this man, this man of stature, this man of acclaim, this man who had, um, who was not a regular blowjob as we would say. This was someone who had position, a high position in the sanctuary, amen? And it doesn't matter what your position may be, you have to know that if Jesus is around and you need Jesus, you have to do everything you can to get to him, amen? The Bible tells us that this ruler of the synagogue, Jairus by name, came to Jesus. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Now when I looked up the meaning of his name, his name means whom God enlightens. Whom God enlightens. That means this is a man that God, great, God gave greater knowledge and spiritual insight to him. So if he had great spiritual insight, he knew that when Jesus was around, that this was someone who was not regular. Amen? And because he recognized who Jesus was, what did he do? He fell at his feet. The Bible tells us that he came from an upright position to prostrating on his face before the Lord. Now, what do you do when you encounter Jesus? When you're in a service and you know that the Lord is here, surely the Lord is in this place. Do you worship? Or do you just give Jesus a little wave? Hello? Hi, Jesus. I know you're here, Lord. Just want to let you know that I recognize that you're here. But we have to follow the example laid out by Scripture. Amen? We know that even people in high office, that they, when they encounter Jesus, they worship Jesus. Amen? So I encourage you, people of God, to worship the Lord. Let's move on to verse 23. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. He besought him greatly. Now this word besought, I looked up the original, because you know who my husband is. He's big on the original text. The Greek is parakaleo. It means to beseech, to entreat, to implore, to beg, to call near, to invite, to pray, and to receive comfort and strength and encouragement. Isn't that what happens when we pray? We receive comfort, we receive strength, and we, re we receive encouragement from the Lord. When you are burdened by something, when you have cares, when you have things that are bothering you, going on in your life, things going on in your family's life, and you know that Jesus can help you, what do you do? You go to the one who can bring you comfort, who can give you ease, the one who can answer your prayers. Amen? So he besought him greatly. He prayed greatly. So look at someone and say, great prayer. Great prayer. Amen? That means he asked continuously. It was abundant. Remember, um, I believe it was last Sunday, our pastor talked about the, the, um, the unjust judge and the woman who was persistent in her prayer. You have to keep asking Jesus. What do you do if Jesus doesn't answer you right away? Do you give up, throw up your hands and walk away in despair? Or do you keep asking? This ruler of the synagogue, the Bible says, he besought Jesus greatly. And he was saying to him, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. So this was a desperate situation, right? For many of us, it may not be like that. It may be something that we can maybe as, um, fix in our own strength, or if someone steps forward and offers us help, they'll be able to help us answer that prayer, but, or, or meet that need. But there are some things that only Jesus can do for us. Amen? And when you recognize that only Jesus can do for you, what do you do? You stay persistently in prayer. You beseech him greatly. You keep asking and asking. If never, Jesus will never say, ah, oh, be quiet. Get away from me. I don't want to hear you anymore. You're bothering me. Jesus is not like that. He invites us to come in and he invites us to ask of him. Amen? So she's letting the Lord know what his need is. You have to be very specific when you pray. We can't be broad and general. Even though we know that the Lord knows our heart, you know, we don't want to fall into that, that uh, routine of saying, Lord, you know what I need. Oh, you know what I need. You want, to, you want to be very specific when you approach the Lord in prayer. Amen? So let's look at, he did, there were four parts, four progressive parts to his prayer that he was asking of the Lord. Amen? So let's look at it. He says, I pray thee, come. The 
first part of this prayer, come, Erkomai. He's telling him to move from where you are right now, Jesus. I know that the multitudes are thronging you. You just came across the sea. And more, uh, there's a lot of people around you right now, Lord. And I know they all have needs. But I have a need. And I know that my need is important to you as well. So he's, telling to, he's saying to Jesus, come from where you are. Come to another place. He's saying, appear. Become known. Right? We want Jesus, you know, we pray sometimes and we say, Lord, show up. Show up and show off. Show up and show off. This is what he's asking. He's saying, Lord, show up. But I want you to show up at my home where my little daughter is. She's at the point of death. Amen? He says, and lay thy hands on her. Lay thy hands on her. Epi ti thing. He's asking the Lord to put your hand on her. I'm not asking you, Jesus, just to come. You know, some, some, the, remember the... Remember the centurion, he said to Jesus, if you just speak the word, I know my servant, my servant will be whole. Jairus isn't asking Jesus to just speak a word. He's asking Jesus to come and physically put his hand on his daughter. Amen? And sometimes what you need Jesus to do is to literally get right down in the middle of what you need him to do. Amen? Just for him to show up, just for him to be in the temple, just for him to be here as we worship him. Because we know... Now, as we praise him, the Lord's presence is here, right? The Bible tells us he inhabits praises, right? But we don't just want his presence hovering over us or being all around us. We want his hand upon us at times. And this is Jairus', this is Jairus plea to him. Lay your hands on her. I want you to physically touch my daughter. Right? The next clause. That she may be healed. Right? Sometimes we want to touch for another reason. Right? It could be that we need strength. Right? It could be that we need deliverance. But Jairus is very specific. That she may be healed. Right? So he's asking, he's asking Jesus, be present. Be present to protect my girl. Be present to aid and determine and control, Lord God, what is happening to her destiny. She's about to check out. She's about to die, Lord. But I know that you have the power to change her circumstance. Amen? I, I know, Lord, that you have the ability, the power to uphold, to preserve, and to help. Right? That's what he's saying to him. He's saying that, Lord, I know that you have the might and the power to do this. When we talk about the hand of the Lord, we are talking about God's power. He's saying, God, I want you to come and release your power upon my daughter. Amen? Amen. And the last clause, he says, and she shall live. Amen. And she shall live. He wants her to be preserved and he wants her to be quickened. He wants her to, be, to breathe. Right? We know that as long as you're breathing, you're alive. Amen. He wants her to have vital power in herself, to be strong and powerful, to have true life to enjoy real life. So he said to the Lord, come, move from where you are and come to where my daughter is. I want your hand, your power upon her and I want her to be healed. I want her to be restored. I want her, Lord God, to be preserved and I want her to be able to enjoy real life. You know, sometimes people, um, people are okay with, with being as they are, right? Lord, as long as there's breath in my body, I'm okay. But Jairus wasn't settling for his daughter just to have breath, right? He wanted her to have life that she, the way that she was supposed to have. Remember Jesus says, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jairus was asking for this kind of life for his daughter. He said she's about to die, but Jesus, I know that you have the power to change her circumstances. And I'm inviting you in. Amen? When you know that Jesus is around, do you invite him in to change what's going on in your life? Do you invite him in to turn things around for you? Or do you sit on the sidelines and cry and weep and, and lament because you have not power in yourself to change what's going on? But remember what, Jair, what the Bible tells us that Jairus did? He besought Jesus greatly. Say again, great prayer. Great prayer. Great prayer. Great prayer. Amen? So you have to pray and keep praying. Amen? Put your hand on your chest and say, keep praying. Keep praying. Amen. Verse 24 is very key. And Jesus went with him. 
So when you invite Jesus in, what happens? He comes. Amen? And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Now, notice what's happening here. Jairus isn't letting the crowd this um, cause him to be upset. Because when he came on the scene, there was already a crowd around Jesus. Amen? But Jairus had a need, and he focused in like, like a laser that, Jesus, I need you to come with me. It doesn't matter who's around. Don't get distracted. Right? It doesn't matter how many other people are calling on Jesus for their needs. Know that Jesus hears your prayer. Amen. Amen? Because the Bible says that when he besought Jesus greatly and asked him, lay out his petition before Jesus, come, put your hands on her, heal her, and let her live. The Bible says Jesus went with him. Amen? So we have the confidence that when we pray, Jesus hears us and Jesus will answer. Amen? The Bible says that much people were thronging him. Amen? Now verse 25 Turn to someone and say the interruption. The interruption. Say the delay. the delay. So if your prayers, if you're calling out to Jesus and, and it seems that he's not answering right away, what do you do? Do you allow yourself to get disappointed and turn away? No. Remember other people have just as much need of Jesus as you do. Some people may have even greater need than you may have at this present time. But because Jesus is God, he's not limited in his power, amen? amen. And because someone may step in front of Jesus and, and be shouting in the church louder than you and, and crying out to Jesus and making a tumult and letting their requests be made known unto God, know that that noise and that cry and that entreaty is not distracting Jesus from what you have already asked him for, amen? So stay focused and keep praying, amen? So verse, from verse 25 to verse 34 lays out, and I, I don't want to go into it, but I encourage you to read it. We are very familiar with it, the woman with the issue of blood, and she seemed like she came in and she just put a break on Jesus' progression to Jairus' house. But remember that everything that Jesus did was according to the Father's schedule. So this was exactly the way that God wanted it to play out. Amen? It was an opportunity. So so just keep in mind that when it looks like Jesus hasn't answered your prayer yet, just keep in mind that he's encouraging your faith to grow. Amen? Unanswered prayers is an opportunity for your faith to grow, for you to keep trusting him. Amen? So from verse 25 to 34, you can read about the woman with the issue of blood, and she came and she seemed like she interrupted what was happening for Jairus, and she got her blessing. She got healed. Amen? But I'm going to jump down to verse 35. So he had addressed the woman. He had this, this interaction with this woman. And when he finished speaking with her and released her, and, and she was made whole, the Bible says in verse 35, While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? So turn to someone and say bad news. Bad news. Say it just got worse. Just got worse. So now the report came to Jairus. Do not bother Jesus anymore. Your daughter is dead. So to the human mind, death is final, right? But who here knows that Jesus has power over death? Amen? Amen? Amen. So they said to him, why troublest thou the master any further? Why did they call him master? That was a common um, title for a teacher, right? And the way that you know that they, they figured Jesus was a teacher because of the multitudes that followed him. Followed him. Whenever a teacher who was of acclaim was, was around and people wanted to hear what they had to say, a lot of people usually came and gathered around him. And because of the multitude around him, they called him master, amen? So they came with a report that the little girl had died, that his daughter had died, and they're asking him, why are you bothering to trouble the master any further? So notice what happened, verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue. Let me pause there. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, put your hand on your chest and say, Jesus knows the report. Jesus knows the report. Amen? 
So the Bible tells us as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue. Notice what happened here. We know that Jesus is the word who became flesh. Amen? So as soon as a negative report comes in, what happens? The word begins to speak. So what do you have to do when you're praying and you're holding on to, to the Lord and you're believing God for a change in your circumstance and a negative thought or a negative report comes in? You have to make sure that, you, that the word is present right then and there. Okay? Because the Bible says as soon as Jesus heard that word about the, about the little girl being dead, he spoke directly to Jairus. Amen? So you have to hold on to the word of God. It's important, people of God, that you read the word of God. Because trust me, when you're believing God for a miracle, when you're believing God for a breakthrough, when you're believing God for healing, when you're believing God for change in your life, there are going to be challenges. Okay, you're going to face challenges and you have to know the word so that you can speak that word in the moment that that negative thought comes in or someone comes around you who tells you that it's never going to happen. You have to rebuke that with the word. You have to speak the word right in that moment. Amen? So the Bible tells us that Jesus heard the word and he said to the ruler, he said to Jairus, be not afraid, only believe. In the original, me fobeo monon pisteo. Four words, I love it. Me fobeo monon pisteo. Do not be alarmed. Do not be frightened. Fear not. Basically he's saying, no fear, only trust. Put your hand on your heart, say no fear, only trust. Amen? So it doesn't matter what the circumstances look like. It doesn't matter. Remember, Jesus has power over death. And death is the strongest, the worst, and the last enemy. And Jesus has conquered death. So anything else before death that you may face, Jesus got it. Amen? Jesus has the power to change it for you. Amen? So Jesus said to Jairus, Fear not. Have faith. Be not afraid. Only believe. Do you know that sometimes you can hear a report that makes you fear? You can hear something that makes you become very afraid? Yes, it happens. We are living right now during the time of this coronavirus and we've heard many reports of people dying and it seems like it's not letting up. It's running rampant across the earth right now, but not in this house, amen? Not in our family, amen? And you know, so when you hear things that can make you fearful, you have to remember that Jesus spoke the word of command. He says, don't be afraid, only believe. Do you believe that Jesus will protect you from the coronavirus? Do you believe that Jesus will make a way for you where it seems impossible? Do you believe that Jesus will restore your family when it seems like there's so much turmoil there? Do you believe that Jesus can hold your marriage together when it seems like every other day you get into a big argument? Do you believe that Jesus can heal your finances when it looks like the bill collectors are all banging on your door, calling you every minute and you're, you're screening your calls because you don't want to be bothered by them anymore? Do you believe that Jesus has the power to change these things for you? Yes, he does. Amen? Let me hear the, crowd, the church say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen? So Jesus has power over all things, even death. Amen? So he said to Jairus, do not be afraid. He said, be not afraid, only believe. Me fobeo, monon pisteo. No fear, only trust. He said to him right in that moment, do not allow anything in your heart besides my word. Do not allow anything except the word of God in your heart. Amen? Remember, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17, I believe it is. The Bible says that when we read the word of God, we continue to feed our faith. Amen? So if something comes in to challenge that faith, something is coming in to challenge the word. And we have to put up that protection, right? We have to put up our shield of faith. We have to tell ourselves, only believe, only trust God. Amen? We have his word. We have his promise. We move on to verse 37. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. So why do you think that Jesus left the other nine and only allowed these three men in with him? There are some things that, that Jesus wants to reveal to only a select few. Amen? Because sometimes when you have the crowd around you, 
people tend to, to speak doubt. We know that Thomas was in the nine that was left behind, and we know Thomas wrestled, wrestled the entire time he was with Jesus with doubting and, and unbelief, right? So Jesus knew in particular who he wanted to take in to, to see what he was getting ready to do for Jairus. So he chose Peter, James, and his brother, John. Amen? And the Bible says in verse 38, And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. Now this is normal, right? The little girl just died. Right? We know, we know, um, we know our dear Josie just lost her mom, and Yuri shared how much wailing, how much they were crying. I mean, death is so final, right? Death is so final. It's a, it's a normal human response to cry and grieve openly, right? So when Jesus came to Jairus' house, this, is what, this was the scene, right? This was the scenario. A lot of noise, people screaming out and crying and wailing, right? And the Bible says that they wailed greatly. 39, and when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? No, Jesus. No, Jesus. The little girl is dead, Jesus. That's why we're crying, Lord. But Jesus is asking them. Notice that, all right, whenever Jesus asks a question, it's because he already knows the answer, right? He's, he's getting ready to set you up so you can hear something maybe you've never heard before. Right? Remember with the multiplying of the food? What do you have to give them, right? The Bible says he already knew what he was going to do. So now he's asking them, why are you making this ado and weeping? Right? It's, it seems superfluous. Why is Jesus asking us? I mean, this is a death scene. What else is going to happen in the death scene but crying and weeping and wailing? Right? But then he went on to say, the damsel is not dead but sleepeth. Now this is good news, right? Who, who agrees that this is good news? Amen. Amen? Amen? The Bible says, Jesus says, the damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Now, what the term here that Jesus is using is when you, like when you get tired and you need to go to your bed and you just lie down to rest. That is what Jesus is calling her death. That she's just laying down to get a, a, a little rest. Now, if you know that Jesus, who is God, who has all power and who has power over death, is looking at this desperate situation and he's saying, it's not the way that you're seeing it. What you're seeing is not what is. Something different is going on here. Who are you going to believe, the circumstance or Jesus? I choose to believe the Lord, amen? So Jesus looked at death and called it sleep. So if she's just sleeping, then we can expect her to wake up, right? Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. The Bible says now, because he, he asked them this question and he said to them that she's not dead but she's sleeping, verse 40 tells us, they laughed him to scorn. So they changed from crying and weeping now to laughing and mocking him, right? So now they're making fun of Jesus like, what are you talking about? You just came on the scene. You don't even know what's going on, right? So they laughed him to scorn. The next, the next clause, the next sentence. But when he had put them all out, so what do you do when people are scorning and mocking when you are believing God? You put out that mockery. When you hear that word that is challenging what Jesus is saying to you, you have to put it out of your mind. Amen? You have to, if, so, if it's someone calling you and saying, um, you know, um, and you're telling them that this is a situation about something that's happening in, in, your fam, in your body or a family member's body. And they say, you know what, the same thing happened to my cousin, you know, and my cousin died. You know what, you need to put that out right away. Don't allow that in, right? Do exactly what Jesus did. The Bible says Jesus put out the mockers. He put them all out. So you do not entertain any word that is not in agreement with the word of God. You put it out. Put it out of your mind, put it out of your mouth. Don't speak it, amen? So the Bible says he put them all out. Then who did he take? The father and the mother of the damsel and the three, Peter, James, and John, them that were with him, and entereth in where the damsel was lying. So now five people with Jesus. So just the six of them going in now to see this great miracle that is about to occur. Remember he sent the Jairus outside in the crowd. Be not afraid, only believe. 
And as Jairus was encouraged to hold on to trusting Jesus, he's getting ready to receive his miracle. Amen? So, so um, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you as you are facing challenges, right? As you're facing desperate situations in your life, and you're holding on to the Lord, and you're holding on to his word, amen? You do exactly as Jairus did. You believe the word of the Lord, amen? So the Bible says now that Jesus took the father and the mother and the three that were with him and went in to where the damsel was. So we're about to see prayer being answered. Amen? Remember we read back in verse 23 what Jairus asked. It says, come, lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. Amen? So Jesus is getting ready now to step into where the little girl is and do exactly what Jairus asked of him. So keep that in mind, that when you pray, be very specific in the way that you pray, because according to how you ask Jesus, is how he's going to answer it. Amen? So if you're vague, Jesus is going to give you a vague blessing. Jairus wasn't vague, he was very particular. He said, I want you to come, I want your hands on her, Jesus, and I want you to heal her, and I want her to live. So look at what Jesus did to answer this prayer. Verse 41. And he took the damsel by the hand. So we know he already came. And now here is his hand on her now, right? So the second part of Jairus' prayer is being answered, right? Jesus' physical hand on Jairus' daughter. He took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumi, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. Now, remember this little girl is dead. There's no life in her. There is no power in her naturally to hear, right? We all agree? When you are dead, you can't hear. But who is Jesus? Jesus is God, and he has power. The Bible says that Jesus said, all power has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Amen? So Jesus is demonstrating his power as God over death. So he's saying to the dead little girl, Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Now, why did Jesus, just like he did with Lazarus, he has to speak specifically to who he's addressing. Because if he just says it broadly, every dead person in the area would get up. Because Jesus is God. But because he was focusing his miracle on Jairus' daughter, he spoke specifically to her. Little girl, damsel, that means little girl. I say unto thee, arise. Why is this significant? Now, we know that in John eleven twenty five, Jesus told Mary and Martha when their brother Lazarus had died, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. So now because Jesus is the resurrection and the life, he said to Jairus' daughter, damsel, little girl, I say unto thee, arise, get up. So what do you do when the creator God, the God who spoke the worlds into being, the God who gave us life, speaks a word to us? Everything inside of us has to respond, amen? So Jesus here in his power, in the demonstration of his power as God, spoke to the little girl and, and commanded her, get up. Verse 42, and straightway, turn to someone and say immediately. Immediately. Do you want an immediate blessing? Amen. Do you want immediate answer to prayer? Amen. I do. I don't want to wait five years for it. The Bible says straightway the damsel arose. Now you know sometimes we've had circumstances, I've seen people who um, have been very sick and then they start to, to recover and you know it's not instantaneous that they can get up and be at full vigor, right? It takes some time for them to gather their strength and to move around and maybe sit up, maybe it's you, you know they would normally sit up first and, and then you very carefully come and help them up on their feet. But the Bible says in verse 42, Straight away the damsel arose. So as soon as the command came from Jesus, right away power came into her body. 
Right away, power came to her body and she was able to get up, and the Bible says, and walked. So she wasn't disoriented. This wasn't a, a, a proceeding blessing, right? A proceeding miracle. This was instantaneous. Say right away. Right. Amen? So right away, the Bible says that she got up and she walked. So this means she began to walk around the room where they were. The, the minute that Jesus, the moment, not the minute, the moment that Jesus commanded her to get up, right away power came back into her body and she was coherent. Right? She wasn't, she wasn't, um, what happened? Where am I? What's going on? Right away her faculties came. Right? The Bible says that he called her faculties back. When he said to her, damsel, I say unto you, arise. He's saying, I want you, all your mental faculties to come immediately back into place. And that is exactly what happened. There was no delay. Amen? And she began to walk around. The Bible says, for she was of the age of 12 years. Right? This wasn't a little baby. Even though her, her dad was calling her my little daughter. She was 12 years old. Amen? The Bible tells us. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. We know this isn't Jesus, right? So this had to be the other five. Right? The parents and the three disciples, right? Peter, James, and John. The Bible says they were astonished with a great astonishment. They had seen a remarkable miracle. Amen? Verse 43. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Why would Jesus charge them that no man should know it? Why would Jesus perform this astounding miracle, this resurrection, bringing this dead girl back to life and told them, don't share the news? Isn't it our natural inclination if we receive a big blessing from the Lord to run around and tell everybody? Yes, but Jesus is telling them, don't tell anybody. Do you think they listen to Jesus? Probably not. Probably not. Right? But he commanded them, he charged them, don't let anybody know about it. This is a private, private miracle. And then he commanded that something should be given her to eat. So we know the reason why it's important and why the Spirit of God included that, because we know that right away, right away she was perfectly, perfectly healed. There was nothing lacking. Nothing lacking. Immediately she, she came back to life and immediately her appetite was restored. Amen? So Jesus is telling them, give her something to eat. Amen? So I just want to encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, as Jesus encouraged Jairus, fear not. No fear. Don't be dismayed. Don't be frightened. Don't be alarmed. Only trust. Only trust. It doesn't matter what report you get. And we have no idea. We do not know the future. We do not know what tomorrow will bring our way. But know this, that if the Lord allows it in your life, it's an opportunity for you to trust Him. To believe Him in that situation. Amen? And be, and be like Jairus. Hold on to faith. Only believe, follow the command of Jesus. Fear not. Only believe. Because when you hold on to the word of God, and you've been praying and asking God, and you laid out your petition before God, it doesn't matter what comes against it, right? We read that Jesus went with him. Jesus heard him. Jesus heard the, the evil report of her, of the daughter dying. And Jesus turned and Jesus rebuked that instantly the word. Instantly the word comes to challenge that negative report. Amen? So God is very particular in how he lays out in his word for us to learn and to live by. Amen? So I encourage you as you are, I know you have particular things going on in your lives that you're believing God for, you're praying about. And I encourage you that you continue to take in the word of God. That you look for particular scriptures that has to do with your need. And you lift up those scriptures unto the Lord. That when the report, when the report comes from the doctor, or when the report comes from someone else, or even in your own mind, right? You tell yourself that it's been going, it hasn't changed in a long time. I don't know if it's ever going to change. Rebuke that, put it out, and, and, and keep the word there, right? Amen? Just as Jesus said. As soon as Jesus heard the word, he said to the ruler. He didn't let the, the ruler entertain that negative thought. He's saying, I have power. 
I have power to raise your daughter back to life. I know when you came to me, you were believing me to heal her. But I'm not, going, I'm not coming to do a healing. I'm coming to do a resurrection. I bring him back to life. Amen? So I encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, that you hold on to this word. I want you to meditate on this word through this week. Amen? And that you continue to put this word and hide it in your heart. And be like Jesus said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Only believe. No fear. Only trust. Turn with me quickly to Mark 9, 23. Mark 9, verse 23. We're wrapping up now. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So if you can believe that Jesus can do it, remember Jesus said to Jairus, only trust, only believe. Don't be afraid. All things are possible to you when you hold on to your faith, when you're trusting God. Amen? Turn with me to Mark 11, 24. A couple other scriptures just to solidify this in your hearts. Mark 11, 24. Mark 11, 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Let me read it again. Therefore, I say unto you, and this is Jesus speaking, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Isn't this what he said to Jairus? Isn't this what Jairus experienced? Jairus laid out his petition, his prayer request unto the Lord. And when the negative report came to challenge his faith, when things got worse, right? Jesus said, don't be afraid, only trust, right? Only believe. Now Jesus is saying again here in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Did Jairus get his prayer answered? Yes, he did. Amen? Because he kept believing the Lord. One more scripture. Luke 1, 37. Luke 1, 37. Last scripture. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen? So not even a resurrection, not even a dead little girl needing resurrection, needing to come back to life, is impossible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Hold on to that word. Amen? So when you are told no, when you, when you know you qualify for something, and you did everything that they said, all that is required, and you put in, and you put in your application for something, and and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and it doesn't look like it's going to come through for you. The Bible says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. You keep believing God that he's going to come through for you. Amen? Do not doubt in your hearts. Do not allow fear to come in. That's what Jesus said to Jairus. Do not fear. He says, no fear, only trust. Do not allow fear even for a moment to come into your heart because fear and faith cannot live in the same place together. Either you're going to fear or you're going to trust. Right? And if you're fearing, you're not trusting. And if you're trusting, there's no room for fear. So choose which one you're going to do. Amen? Either you're going to believe God or you're going to tremble and worry and fret. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe God. Put your hand on your chest and say, I believe God. I believe God. For with God, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Shall be impossible. Amen? Amen? The Lord bless you. Let us pray.